All right, let's get to work. We're already late. There we go. Most times when we see overflowing garbage bins, there's usually syringes associated with them, so that's why we pay attention to it. But quite frankly, just about everywhere in our community now, you'll find that kind of stuff. There are nicer ways to spend a hot summer evening, but James Favel can't sit back and relax. Favel heads up the Bear Clan Patrol, which walks Winnipeg's roughest neighborhood, cleaning it up and offering hope and even a little candy to people who call it home. Orange for your shirt. That one kind of matches you. Tonight, they're also looking for a missing teen girl. Missing girl, right? Looking for her tonight. She's new, eh? Yeah. So just today? Just this morning. Yeah. This is exactly why they're here. This bear clan was brought to life by the death of another missing girl. At approximately 1.30 p.m., a body was recovered from the Red River near the Alexander Docks. Winnipeg police confirmed late today that Tina Fontaine's remains were pulled from the water at the Alexander Docks, and police said the death is a homicide. Tina Fontaine. It's been five years since the 15-year-old girl's body was pulled from the Red River. It wasn't the first death along these shores, but it's the one that shook a nation to its core. Long before she became a poster child for missing and murdered Indigenous women, Tina Fontaine was just a little girl. <laughs> this is the Tina her family remembers, sharing for the first time what few videos they have of her. Fontaine grew up on Saguin First Nation, raised by her great aunt, Thelma Favel. Life with the Favels was happy and loving. And so was Tina. We are pretty, smart, gorgeous. Her Facebook littered with sweet messages to friends and laughter, something her great aunt, Thelma Favel, misses the most. <laughs> <laughs> and like it was like a little machine gun and that's how her grandma laughed too like she had my sister's laugh while the Favels were family Tina Fontaine craved a deeper bond her biological father was murdered she desperately wanted to connect with her mother in Winnipeg who was getting her own life back on track and uh, I told her if your grades are good you can go. And she just aced everything, math, science, everything she aced. So um, I had to hold my end of the bargain up and tell her, like, you know, let her go. And she, for a week, she was only supposed to go for a week. But within days of arriving in the city, her mother, spiraling back into addiction, kicked the 15-year-old out onto the street. Reports were filed with child welfare and police, both would fail to bring her to safety. She was flagged. So when a child is flagged, they're supposed to keep her. But they let her go. What is believed to be Fontaine's last 24 hours might best be described as a cascade of failures. Beginning here on the Winnipeg streets she came to know so well that summer. Witnesses place her here in the West End area, downtown, before she's picked up by a man in a truck. Police soon pull them over here in an isolated industrial area of the inner city. The man behind the wheel has a suspended license. He's taken into custody. As for Fontaine, there's a missing persons alert on her name. Police never see it. They drive away and leave the 15-year-old on the side of the road. It's 5 a.m. 9.55 a.m., cameras pick Fontaine up at this parking lot, several kilometers away. She's staggering, exhausted. She passes out between two cars. A security guard calls an ambulance. 11.20 a.m., at the Health Sciences Center, doctors examine Fontaine. She's underweight. Traces of alcohol, marijuana, cocaine, and other substances are in her body. Still, within hours, she is released. 3.51 p.m. A social worker drops Fontaine off at this downtown hotel where the province's overtaxed child welfare system places kids in crisis because there is simply nowhere else for them to go. She makes her way to her room alone, 
but she doesn't stay, and workers don't stop her. For the third time that day, she slips away. Despite coming into contact with police, doctors, and a social worker, all within a 24-hour period, every last one of them fails to throw her the lifeline she needs. After all of that, she disappears. Nine days later, her body is pulled from the Red River, wrapped in a duvet cover. A tragic death that not only broke a community's heart, but set it on fire. When Pina Fontaine's body was found, that was, that was it. It was just the switch was flipped, and it was time to do something. We needed, we needed boots on the ground. We needed bold action. We needed it now. We couldn't wait anymore. anymore. Um, you know, we, it, 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 was, it, it needed to be done now. Five years after Fontaine's death, those on the ground, like Michael Champagne, say very little has changed. Every week, he leads the conversation here at the bell tower in the heart of the inner city. The way that Tina was failed is the way that many kids in Manitoba are being failed right now by the child welfare system, by the police force, by our medical system. And I think that the way that any system is able to continue in this way is when those that are in positions to help look in the other direction. And they say, not my problem. Now, people like Champagne are making it their problem. Here at the bell tower. What can I do? Um, what can each of us do to address these systems that are no longer serving us? To receive timelines with your case plan. Yes, that is actually real. And here at Fearless R2W, a group that takes its name from the postal code of one of Winnipeg's poorest neighborhoods and challenges the child welfare system to make positive change. It's everyone's problem. And if you see something, then you have an obligation and a responsibility on a human level, not even related to your job or the system, on a human level, to do what you can to make things better. Sometimes making things better is as simple as making a sandwich. Alexi Legere prepares food for every Mama Bear clan walk. Thank you for coming. Our elder is going to lead us in our prayer tonight. Run by the mothers and grandmothers of the inner city, Mama Bear clan takes a nurturing approach to the streets. We all know that it's being the love, seeing the love, feeling the love, right? So that's the premise of the walk. It's why we do what we do. When they're on the street, you don't know where you can go for help. So that's why we come to them. And we do what we do now to, to try and make their lives a little bit easier when they're on the street. Legere sees a lot of herself in Tina Fontaine. She knows firsthand what it's like to be young, homeless, and alone. My situation, there was a lot of older men that took advantage of me not having anything because I didn't have food, I didn't have money. So they, they prey on girls, and they prey on mostly Aboriginal girls because they know that uh, they, a lot of them don't have family to turn to for help. On these nights, at least, people in need can turn to the Mama Bear clan for help. What happened to Tina Fontaine? Always in the back of Legere's mind, pushing her to do more. The police didn't do enough. They didn't. They weren't out there looking how we look. Like when we have a missing person, we're on the street. We're looking in dumpsters. We're looking in back alleys. We're looking everywhere. So I feel like the system just let her down in that aspect. There was no one there to protect her. For Samantha Chief, Mama Bear Clan isn't just about stepping up. It's about honoring what Tina Fontaine's story did for other Indigenous women. She finally opened a lot of people's eyes, you know, to all the bad things that happened to us Aboriginal women, you know. We're, we're people too, you know. We're not just pieces of trash you can throw away. <laughs> we have value to others. We're not, we're not who they portray us to be. We're not all street walkers. We're not trying to just do this because it's our choice, you know, it's just we're people. We need to be honored and loved just like regular people too, you know? Social worker Mitch Bourbonaire also helps Mama Bear Clan. He's watched a community tired of being failed by the system create its own. Our systems are top heavy with bureaucracy and policy and procedure and it takes a long time to get things done. 
well, we don't have time. With, with children like Tina, we don't have time. We gotta get out on the streets. We gotta look for people. We gotta bring people hope. All of this, the banding together, the planning, connecting, protecting a community because of a little girl lost in a system that didn't work. You should hang out again whenever, whenever see you. Katie Nicholson, CBC News, Winnipeg. So Katie, looking ahead to tomorrow's report on what went wrong for Tina Fontaine, you've spoke to someone who knows some of what's in it. What should we expect? Well, that's right. Thelma Fable, Tina's great aunt, who you heard from in our doc, already knows what's in the report. The advocate briefed her last Wednesday, and Fable says what we're going to hear tomorrow morning is going to be heavy and heartbreaking. Fable says she learned new things about how the system turned Tina away, and she says its contents are, quote, awful, and included new information about how troubled Fontaine's biological parents were. Fable said she needed to smudge several times with sweetgrass to help her get through the delivery of that report. And what are Indigenous leaders looking for in this report tomorrow? Well, the majority of children in Karen, Manitoba, like Tina, are Indigenous. Former MKO Grand Chief Sheila North says she hopes that the report advocates for more counselling, more financial help for vulnerable women, and more culturally appropriate supports for kids in care, and an emphasis on keeping them in their community. Here's Sheila North. There are gaps and there are holes in the system that need to be filled and they can only be filled by the community themselves. Um, because if we don't uh, fix them, we're gonna see generations upon generations of, of people like Tina Fontaine that, have, that fall through the cracks and, and actually get, get, get killed. Now North says if nothing else, this advocate's report will help put Tina's name on something she hopes will make positive changes. Okay, thanks very much, Katie. You're welcome.